2 Kings chapter 1. Then Moab rebelled against Israel, northern Israel, after the death of Ahab. Now we get two interesting points here. In 2 Kings 22, 47, there was no king in Edom. Those are enemies of Israel. That is Israel's brother, Jacob and, Israel, uh, 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 Jacob and Esau. 2 Kings 1, 1, we got Moab. That's family. That was Lot and Abraham. I forget what the family relations there. Cousin, uncles, cousins, something like that. Matthew. So... Moab is an enemy of Israel. How do we close off one book of 1 Kings and empty up the second book of Kings and we've got two enemies of Israel? What more can I say? I have no idea. But Edom has no king and Moab rebelled against Israel, which they've done all the time. And Ahaziah, I can never say this again, Ahaziah, Ahaziah, it's Ahab and Jezebel's son fell down through the, a lattice in his upper chamber that was in Samaria. So first part of this verse is a lattice is that cross work that you would put in front of a window or an opening that, hey, you can't go no further. And as a Hyatt went further and fell down, he's on the upper chamber. He's not on the first floor. He goes for a big fall and was sick. Now, was the sickness because of the fall? Or was he sick when he, because he fell? And he sent messengers. He can't go nowhere. He's, he's bedridden. And said unto them, go inquire of Baal Zeba. That's the first time that word shows up. And that's an interesting word. Very interesting. Baal, you know, that's the big holy God of the heathen. Matthew 10, 25. Matthew? I'm going to go all the way to the Gospels? Yeah. Matthew 10. And we're going to show you the state of the condition of Israel. Matthew 10, 25. Jesus speaking, you've got a red letter Bible, this, this verse would be in red. And he's, he's explaining. He says, it is enough for the disciple that he be as his master and the servant as his Lord. If they have called the master, that's Jesus. Israel, they, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, people of Israel. If they have called the master of the house, Israel, temple, Beelzebub. That's the first time that shows up. You see, wait a minute. This, you know, one's B-A-A-L, one's B-E-E-L, E, B-U-B. -E -E -B. Beelzebub. They called Jesus Beelzebub as Ahiah calls upon Beelzebub. Now, before we read the next part, Beelzebub, you would recognize if you were to study the gods of Egypt that God attacked in Exodus. And to give you an idea where we're at, when God attacked Egypt with the flies, and I forget what the Egyptian name of that God is, that's Beelzebub. Beelzebub is the lord of the flies, the filth god. And there's nothing more filthy is to see where flies will land. And yet flies will not land on chewing tobacco that's been spit out. That's kind of interesting. You will find flies on stuff you'll find in the grass or on the sidewalk left behind by dogs or humans. They're pesty. They're, they're a god. <laughs> they were an Egyptian god. God sent flies, attacked that god. I don't know. But here's the Lord. This is a god that they said Jesus. This is the power that Jesus 
did his his healing. This is the power that Jesus uh, took care of the leprosy, the, the devils especially. Jesus took care of the evil spirits by Beelzebub. And when you run across a man that said, we have a legion of little tiny, and that's a whole other subject, but the Bible says where the worm dieth not in hell and maggots are the little babies of flies. But it's interesting because now let's read the next part in Second Kings, the God of Ekron. Ekron is a city in Philistine. So with 1 Kings 22 and 2 Kings 1, as far as Azahiah, he's got Jeroboam's golden calves with the false priests, the false ceremonies or fees. He's got the false altars. He's got the false, he's got the Catholic religion. And then with mom bringing Baal and the false prophets and the false altars and the lying uh, spirit that goes into those prophets. Now let's add another one. We've got the gods of Ekron showing up, of flies. One of the chief deities of Philistine was a god called. Why is it every time it comes right to my. Uh, what? Dagon. Dagon. As soon as it comes to my mouth, it falls out. Weren't they ones that got infested with the ham hemorrhoids too? Yeah, because the ark, and that's where the ark comes in, almost comes into Ekron. We'll look at that in a moment then. But here's a god that is a fish. Have you ever gone fishing to see where flies landed? On the fish. On the fish. <laughs> Now, Dagon has a big hat, and if you look at it sideways, it was to represent an open mouth fish. And if you ever take the Pope with his hat and he turns around, there are pictures, he looks like an open fish. So let's let's go. First Samuel 5:10. We're not in a rush. I think we I think we did a lot of things in 1 Kings. And what am I looking for? First Samuel chapter 5, verse 10. And it's kind of interesting now, the story of Ekron, 5.10. Well, that's 5.1. I don't know if we're going to finish the chapter tonight. 5.1. And the Philistines took the Ark of God, they, they conquered it, they got it, and brought it from Ebenezer to Ashdod. And when the Philistines took the Ark of God, they brought it into the house of Dagon, there he is, the fish god, and set it by Dagon. And when they of Ashdod arose early in the morning, behold, Dagon was falling on his face to the, to the earth before the Ark of the Lord. He's bowing down before God, as the Pope will with his hat. Not with the hat, but you know what I mean. And they took Dagon and set him in his place again. When they rose early in the morning, on the morrow in the morning, behold, Dagon was fallen upon his face to the ground before the ark of the Lord. And Dagon, and the head of Dagon, and his palms were, you know, cut off. But down to, let's back from here again, let's see the references. Still chapter 5, but let me get the verse. Verse 10. Therefore, they sent the Ark of God to Ekron. There it is. That's a city in Philistines. And they've got, you know, the, the, the hemorrhoids. They're getting all kinds of diseases, kind of ailments, because they have the Ark. And they bring it back to the land. But there it is. Here are enemies of God. They, they didn't worship God. They kept Dagon with the, with the, with the broken arm. Like you'll have in the, you'll have in, the, in museums today, isn't there a statue called David? And he has no arms. Well, we don't worship David. And we don't worship statues, but museums will. So Ekron, that's the Philistine. So here's Beelzebub, another god with Baal and with the golden calves. 
And may I remind you, when Aaron made that golden calf for Israel, they also had their own feast day celebration and playing the music and singing and dancing and playing. That seems to follow the, the calf, the cow god. And if you were to eat chicken instead of the cow, that's highly worshipped in churches today. Hey, it's Bible. It's the truth. If you don't like it, you go have a problem with God. All right? You got a black and white animal and cardboards, all that, trying to sell. And you have beanie animals and stuff. I mean, let's move on. People don't like when I preach against their gods. Verse 3. But the angel of the Lord, that's Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, before he is born, before he is conceived in Mary's womb by the Holy Spirit, here he is, the angel of the Lord. He first shows up to Hagar, of all people, when she's run from Sarah. The angel of the Lord said to Elijah, all right, there's Elijah. He's been gone for a while. I don't know where he went, but he's been gone. Here he is. Elijah is in the time of Hazariah. As a Hyatt, well, however you say his name, forgive me for getting it wrong. Don't go against the Bible because I can't pronounce his name. But he's had the truth. <laughs> he knows about Elijah the Jesuite. There he is. Arise, go up to meet the messengers of the king of Samaria. So these guys are sent out and Elijah is going to intercept <laughs> these men. They're not going to go to where they're going. Now, you know how far it is from Mary all the way down to the Philistine area. And we know Elijah, he has a capability, man. He has the ability to start booking. Man, when uh, 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 Ahab got in his chariot, Elijah outran him. Arise and meet the messengers of the king of Samaria and say unto them, Is it not because there is not a God of Israel? Now, just because Israel is not right, because the kings of Israel are not correct, there are people in Israel that love God. There are people in northern Israel that are doing what God is still telling them to do, even though they are in a bad, forsaken, wicked area. There are people, and God is there. If God was not amongst them, he would not have sent Elijah to Israel. God is reaching out to the northern tribes. He has not forsaken them. He has not thrown them into the garbage can. He's still trying to get Azahiah. He couldn't get Ahab. He's trying to get Azahiah. Is there not a God in Israel that ye go to inquire of Beelzebub, the God of Ekron? Why are you going to him? What's your problem? Come to me. I'll take care of you. Now therefore, thus saith the Lord, Thou shalt not come down from thy bed, from that bed on which thou art gone up. He's in bed, he can't get out of that bed, he's not ever coming out of that bed. But shall surely die. You're going to die what you what you got. Because you went after Beelzebub. You realize those people that said that Jesus Christ, not a big subject right now, but, but you cast out devils by Beelzebub, and Jesus said, you know, this thing, you know, uh, uh, the unpardonable sin. The unpardonable sin that Jesus said was by the works of the Holy Spirit of Jesus, you said that that work of the Holy Spirit casting out those devils was by Beelzebub. You're unpardonable. You're not ever going to be forgiven by saying that. When you go study, the unpardonable sin was Jesus, the work of the Holy Spirit by those devils. You said it was Beelzebub. And when you wrought the cross reference here, because you went to go see Beelzebub, you're dead. That's the cross reference. Back to where we were in Matthew. Something about that Beelzebub, hey, that's it, you're done. Thou shalt not come down from that bed on which thou art going up. You can't come down, you can't go up, so it must be a high bed. But shall surely die. And Elijah departed. And when the messengers turned back unto him, they're going back to the king, he said unto him, Why are ye now turned back? You're back awfully early. 
And they said unto him, There came a man up to meet us. And he said unto us, Go turn again unto the king that sent you, and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord. Is it not because there is not a God in Israel? Look at that. What was exactly what was said. That thou sendest to inquire of Beelzebub, the God of Ekron? Exactly what Elijah said. Therefore thou shalt not come down from that bed on which thou art going up, but shall surely... Now look at that. That is a proper message. You know Moses didn't do that when he came back to Jethro? Can I go check on my family in Egypt? Nothing about well, God's going to redeem them, God's going to bring them out. Nothing about God's going to meet with them on that mount. He goes back to Jethro and says, hey, can I go check on my family? These messengers of Ahijah are more reliable than what Moses was. And when the messengers, uh, oh, wait a minute. Uh, so Shuri died, verse 7. And he said unto them, What manner of man was he that which came up to meet you and told you these words? Who was this guy? And they answered, He was a hairy man. So was Esau. We're going to find out Elijah, Elisha, is a bald man. And Gert, that's the first time Gert showed up. And then another one I forgot to mention, verse 2, that disease, recover that disease is the first time disease shows up. I don't know if I said that. He, excuse me. And Gert with a girdle of leather, that's the first and only time leather shows up. About his loins. And he said. It is Elijah the Tishbite. So Azariah knows exactly. Who Elijah is. No doubt of a shadow of doubt about it. And knows him by name. Matthew 3, 4. Again not a subject we can't go into. But Matthew 3, 4. John the Baptist would have been Elijah if the nation of Israel had received Jesus. Matthew 3, 4, and in this same John, John the Baptist, had his raiment of camel's hair. Well, he said he was a hairy man. And leather girdle, leathern girdle, about his loins. And then actually his meat was locusts and wild honey. I wonder if that was a diet of Elijah. So, by what we learn by Azahiah, a, a wicked king in the north, we have been told exactly what John the Baptist looked like, who he looked like, Elijah. And even the disciples say, shouldn't Elijah showed up, Lord? And Jesus said, he already showed up, and they did as they will to him. Elijah is going to show up in the tribulation period. With Moses, probably. So, here he goes. Then the king sent unto him a captain of fifty with his fifty. Fifty-one men. And he went up to him. And behold, he sat on top of a hill. And he spake to him. Thou man of God, the king has sent, come down. That's a demand that's sports. Get down here. Let's go. Move it. He's a captain. He's used to giving orders. And Elijah answered said to the captain of 50. If I be a man of God. Let fire come down from heaven. And consume thee and thy 50. And there came down fire from heaven. And consumed him and his 50. Now, before we look at the next reference, what is the context here? The king has sought out Elijah. Don't know why. Is it good or bad? We don't know. But go get Elijah. Captain comes up to Elijah. Get over here now. Come on. King wants to see you. Move it. Elijah says, hey, if I be a man of God, phew, you're dead. Guess I'm a man of God. We got the context, correct? Luke 9.54. Luke 9, 54. And this is mentioned so often, but it's not mentioned in the contents. 
Luke 9, 54. And we'll start in 51. And it came to pass when the time was come that he should be received up, received up, he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. He's on his way to Jerusalem. He's on his way to the cross. And he sent messengers. <laughs> Did you get that? He sent messengers before his face. And they went and entered to a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. And they did not receive him because his face was as though he would go to Jerusalem. And when his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, wilt thou that we command fire to come down from heaven as, and consume them as Elijah did? That's not the context of 2 Kings 1. Yeah, there were messengers sent. The context of, of 2 Kings 1 was they came to Elijah with force. King wants to see you. Well, to prove who I am, boom. Just because this city would not receive Christ and Christ is steadfast heading to Jerusalem to die on the cross, these men, hey, let's do what Elijah did. Let's destroy a whole city. Jesus says, but he turned, that, that stopped him right in his track, and rebuked them, say, you know not what manner of spirit ye are of. Now, the spirit of Elijah was not the spirit of James and John here. Let's destroy him. And though you run back and forth with the, con with, with the cross reference, James and John do not have the same context of Elijah. Elijah is has an army set before him of 51 men, a military leader. He's been sent by a wicked king. We don't know why the king sent for him. This man boldly goes up to Elijah and get down here. Elijah is some kind of character. I mean, he did it on Mount Carmel. Fire came down and burnt the sacrifice. And then he killed the prophets. No one's rejected Elijah. And verse 11 of 2 Kings. And also he sent unto him another captain of 50 and his 50. 102 men all together now. And he answered, send him, O man of God. Thus, thus had the king said, come down quickly. All right, he's a little more polite, but it's still a command. Get down here. Elijah's like, you ain't going to talk to me like that. By the three groups of men. No. There is no respect to who I am. Elijah answered and said unto him, If I be a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and consume thee and thy fifty. And the fire of God came down from heaven and consumed him and his fifty. God has listened to Elijah. 102 men are ashes. And he sent again the king, as I sent again a captain of a third 50 and his 50. And the third captain of 50 went up, came, and fell on his knees before Elijah. And besought him and said to him, O man of God. I pray thee, let my life and the life of, of these 50, thy servants, be precious in thy sight. <laughs> now this guy, I mean, he, he's shaking. There's there's two piles of, of men in their, in their men. This ashes, maybe still smoking. This guy, oh, Elijah, <laughs> please don't kill me. Please don't send that fire down. I'm just coming here because the king has sent me to come and tell you to come. Oh, Elijah. Behold, there came fire down from heaven and burnt up two captains and their former fifties with their fifty. <laughs> Therefore, let my life now be precious in thy say. Oh, and he's pleading to Elijah. He's being respectful. He is honoring who Elijah is. Elijah, you are a man of God. 
See these piles? No doubt you are. And maybe this guy, maybe he says, I servants. And I don't know if he's just saying that as, uh, you know, to buy, a, maybe they are the servants. But, and the angel of the Lord that showed up to him to say, meet those messengers, Jesus Christ, the angel of the Lord, said to Elijah, go down with him. Be not afraid of him. So, this third man that's respectful, God says, okay, go with him. The ones that had no respect, you better, and with the object lesson here, whether fire called down to men or die, you better treat those men that honestly God is using, you better treat them with respect. Now, there are a lot of men who proclaim to be men of God and a lot of preacher and preacherettes, that's women preachers. They're not of God. They are false prophets. And Elijah killed them. But when you got someone who seriously is bound with God and God is using, you better treat him with respect. Whether you like him or not. Saved or lost, there's judgment coming. How you treat listen, Paul is killing Christians. Paul is putting Christians in prison. Paul is just abusing Christians. And Jesus comes down and he says, Thou persecutest me. Better be careful how you treat God's people. That Catholic Church is going to have a lot to answer for what they've done to true Christians. And he rose and went down with him unto the king. And he said, Thus saith the Lord, For as much as thou hast sent messages to inquire of Beelzebub, the God of... This is three times this message has been given to the king. Elijah told the messengers, and the messengers told the king, and now Ahab, uh, Ahab, uh, Elijah is telling the king, Is it not because there is no God in Israel to inquire at, of his word? You could have came to me. You could have, listen, you didn't have to send the, the men out to, the, to Beelzebub. You could have sent to me like you just sent those three captains to me. Say, the king wants to see you, uh, Elijah. What's the purpose? He's sick, and he just doesn't know what to do. Let's go. He could have done that from the beginning. But instead, he went to a false god, and he's going to get down. So what do you think when people say that, that God is going to allow everybody into heaven, all religions are okay in the eyes of God, when this Beelzebub religion of the Philistines is not okay with God, and God says, you're dead. What are you going to do with that? What are you going to do when God is angry with Ahab because he's got the Jeroboam calves? What are you going to do when God's mad at Jezebel because she's got Baal? And then when Jeremiah comes, God is angry because they got the queen of heaven. And yet people teach and preach today that God just loves everybody. No, he doesn't. And well, oh, you don't you need to preach more love. Not when you're oh, not when you're not doing what God's told you to do. You could have came to me with the word of God. Elijah is a faithful man of the word. He still went to Beelzebub. He knew exactly who Elijah was. And there are people that, what I know personally, I don't know about it, but there are people, we are in the ministry, uh, in, the, in the streets of uh, uh, Daytona Beach. There are people who know who I am. They know where I stand. They know it's the Bible. And they have troubles. And they have problems. And they're going to go to their priest. They're going to go to their rabbi. They're going to go to their preacherette. They're going to go against God. And they're going to expect that God's going to love them. And I preach the message, if you do not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you're going to hell. I hate him. I don't like him. He preaches bad against us. He don't come for him, in the words of his father Ahab. And just because you have an idea and you have a religion does not mean that God approves. To acquire of his word, therefore thou shalt not come down off thy bed. On which thou art going up, but shall surely die. 
So he died according to the word of the Lord which Elijah had spoken. People, when they hear me preach about hell and will not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, they will go to hell by the word of God that I preached. If a man comes knocking on your door and he's got a, a King James Bible, he's bringing the gospel that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures, he tells you the way of God, the salvation, and you reject it and you die and you go to hell, you will go to hell by the word of God, by that man that came to your door or that by that gospel track or whoever witnesses to you with the pure, undefiled word of the merit of Jesus Christ alone. He died according to the word of the Lord, which Elijah had spoken. Now, can you imagine, and I'm going to assume here. Can you imagine the people who are standing at the great white throne judgment, depart from me that work in iniquity. I never knew you, but that man, that name, that person preached the gospel to you. And you rejected me still. That's what just happened here. Elijah is quoted for telling the king exactly what the truth is. Though the king died and went to hell. And I wouldn't be surprised for, for the king, as a high, if he stand at the great white throne judgment, if 2 Kings chapter 1 is not open and quoted to him. I threaten the people I preach on the streets of Daytona. You may hear my awful voice again in the condemnation, in the damnation of the wrath of God. I tell them, once I preach to you, you can never say you never knew. At any point, Azahiah could have repented. Could he not? Let's go back to chapter, uh, 1 Kings chapter 21, verse 27. Azahiah's heart was hardened against God. I mean, this is kind of repentance for the for at hand, but and it came to pass when Ahab heard those words that he rent his clothes and put sackcloth upon his flesh and fasted and lay in sackcloth and went softly. And the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite, See thou how Ahab humbleth himself before me? Because he humbled himself before me, I will not bring the evil in his days. So there's some, there's some repentance, not a full repentance. As high, never even done that. How dare you bring that man to me so I can give him peace of my mind, whatever it was. We're not even told why he called the king. I mean, they called Elijah. So he died according to the word of the Lord, which Elijah has spoken. And Jehoram reigned in his stead in the second year of Je in the second year of Jehoram, the son of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, because he had no son. That's interesting. Now the rest of the acts of Azahiah, which he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Israel? Boom. That's it. That's the end of his life. Didn't he do anything? He may have done a lot, but in the eyes of God, he died and went to hell. That's what he did. We're told a small little story how a man came and told him, about God. You didn't want to believe God? You didn't want to put your trust in God? You died and went to hell. By the way, that's what that's what my man told you. That's what the prophet told you. That's what the preacher told you. That's what my Christian told you. That's what my bride told you. You got the word. You've heard it. Too many people are going to end up at that great white throne judgment. And they're going to realize, hey, that's the word of God. Though you didn't believe it. 